So the last type of inheritance I want to talk about in this uh, series are the things you inherit from your ancestors. The spirit type of inheritance, they tend to have the strongest um, sensations, um, stronger actually also than the bloodline levels, but the bloodline levels are also the types of inheritance you can do the least with. So if for instance your ancestors have been yeah, um, persecuted in a certain way then you will have an antipathy and if the same way if your ancestors have been helped by a certain other group you will have a sympathy towards those people and while these antipathies and sympathies you have on a spirit level can lead you to develop yourself and then also they can disappear again like you may hate a person but once you've resolved your issues they can be neutral and the same you can love a person and once you've settled what you needed to do also the feeling will go back to neutral um, these impulses you get from the level of the bloodline they tend to be unchangeable and uh, they're a pattern which is really, um, yeah, you could say, almost burned into your energy body, how to react uh, to a certain other energy. So it is very much like an instinct. Uh, it's part of your biology, part of your body, or the energetic body, to be able to do something, or and, but also to react in a certain manner. So there has been a lot of, um, you could say, pruning of uh, certain bloodlines, especially in, uh, in Western Europe. <clears throat> Often, depending on the, yeah, on the society, there is a certain ideal of what is considered good, what is considered normal, and um, these ideals are promoted, so these elements um, also are could say nourished in the bloodline and they become stronger and stronger and if an element has not been nourished but has not been repressed that will also tend to weaken within the bloodline so if we look with for instance um, as something like religion so here in Sweden where I live people yeah used to follow the Nordic tradition of believing in uh, in Odin, in Thor, in Thyr, uh, Freya, and even though, like, it's a thousand years ago that people used to worship these powers, there's kind of a basis of how your energy body can relate to these powers, how it can be receptive to these powers, because your ancestors used to do it, and they had benefits from doing it. It was also stimulated by society to uh, to pray to them, to go to these temples, to these holy sites, and to cooperate and receive lessons and guidance from these powers. So even though for the last thousand years your ancestors may have been um, Christians, there is still an enhanced sensitivity because of your bloodline to these powers. But there can also be a pruning. Like if you look at, for instance, at the um, 17th century, there have been a lot of witch hunts. And witch hunting has is actually something which has always existed. Even before Christianity, there used to be certain taboos of certain talents or certain powers which are forbidden and which should not be practiced. And in Western Europe, um, the art of necromancy, for instance, has been a taboo for a very long time and also people yeah, who used to have these talents in their bloodline, those bloodlines have either been watered down or they've been actually killed so there's no offspring left. So this talent of working with uh, yeah, dead bodies, uh, the spirits of people who are recently deceased has all but disappeared in Western Europe. But if you look for instance at America or Eastern Europe, um, 
or actually the rest of the world of the world <laughs> there this talent is still very much present people can communicate with the dead more easily um, they can also work together with dead people gain power from death in ways which most of the people in Western Europe have forgotten well except in Britain of course where a lot of these arts have been preserved and from there also carried on to the US so you could say that society has in a way warped our ancestry and the same history which our ancestors have gone through um, is still with us today. It is in a way you could say the foundation upon which um, our energy body is built and of course we can yeah, build another layer on top of it because it is generation upon generation upon generation and for instance if I should choose to I could start working with these uh, forgotten powers, forgotten energies and I'm very interested actually in working with um, especially yeah, pagan energies and pagan forces because I feel it is part of me which has been dormant for a while and I feel these parts feel yeah, a chance to awaken in my current incarnation so I'm guessing that because of my being part of that bloodline like the people who will come after me will again have a little bit more access so the access to these powers has been diminishing over time and now for me it's opening up and maybe because of society's pressures and the choice of my offspring they will diminish again so this is a constant you know, widening and narrowing depending on the circumstances people live in and how much effort they put into overcoming these circumstances and it's a lot more difficult to get a decent harvest out of your life if of course the circumstances are very bad, the ground is infertile, there's bad weather, there's not enough light, um, then the amount of development you can achieve is very little, but you can sometimes also prevent things actually from going back for backwards as much as they otherwise would have gone. So you're not just living for yourself, but you're also living to create a foundation for your offspring but also you're not just creating a foundation for your own offspring, you're actually creating a foundation for the next generation because you're also part of society and trying to create a society which will enhance their abilities and give more freedom or chances for a certain talent to yeah, move forward can be very beneficial not just to your own children but to all children. If we look at certain yeah, more um, problematic powers, I've already talked a little bit about the ability to communicate with the dead. Another one which is um, yeah, often discriminated against is what is called the evil eye. The evil eye is not actually evil, but it is a talent to use uh, the eye chakras to penetrate, to uh, bypass other people's energetic defenses to in a way see things which the other person might be willing to trying to hide and yeah other people um, yeah who don't have this talent may feel very uncomfortable with that because this person has power over them in a way they don't have um, over the person with this uh, active eye chakras and also they yeah or in a way having, um, you could say, an advantage over them. And since they cannot beat this advantage by themselves developing this talent very easily, they tend to go the opposite way and try to block people with this advantage, either by using amulets, so this person cannot use their advantage, and by not being able to use it also it diminishes them, or by actually persecuting uh, these people and ostracizing them from society, um, sometimes even killing them, um, and um, also through processes of uh, eugenics, um, trying to destroy their bloodlines. And for the people who think that eugenics is something which was only done 
in, the, uh, in Nazi Germany during the Second World War by preventing people who had um, hereditary insanity by sterilizing them. No, it's actually being done even at this very moment in countries like um, Slovakia and Romania to uh, yeah, people from the uh, Roma and Sinti communities and therefore also this yeah, the amount of generations or the amount of offspring which will inherit these talents uh, is diminished and therefore also the accessibility of this power to other people is also diminished. Personally I don't really believe in trying to um, cleanse uh, bloodlines from certain powers or certain talents. I think every talent um, is a step forward, is something um, a spirit might have a use of. Because even if you have a certain talent in your bloodline, it doesn't mean that you will actually get to use it. But you can at least be a carrier and pass it on to your next generation. And if you want to use it, then you can start working more with your bloodline, with your ancestors, and benefit from the power and experience they have built up. Um, here again in Western Europe we are at a disadvantage. Uh, because unlike the Native Americans and the Chinese people and the people from Africa, we don't have this kind of pact with our ancestors that they will stay around to help us. So our ancestors tend to be a little bit more selfish. When they die, they move on and they start doing their own thing and they don't wait for their children, great grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren all the way down the line to see if somebody might have a need for some of the talents or skills or experience they have developed before. So in Europe we used to do this, we used to have ancestor worship as well. Um, but basically when yeah, Christianity came around and um, you know, working with the dead became a taboo, um, so became, this became very very blocked, so there's more than a thousand years of blockage we would have to undo to really start empowering our Western European bloodlines. But for those of us who have bloodlines which are from the Native Americans, um, from Chinese culture or from uh, African culture, they will find that they will actually be able to find ancestor spirits much more easily and by yeah, performing the right rituals, empowering them, giving these ancestors the energy they need to awaken the power within our bloodline. Um, yeah, we can really get a boost and really um, yeah, collect our inheritance, you could say, by working with them. One of the problems of working with, inherit with your uh, ancestors is also that the negative things will also become enhanced because as I said before they can also be uh, a nationalistic or ethnic or cultural or religious strife which has happened within your ancestry and these struggles can also re-manifest in this life so maybe if um, you come from a long line of criminals or rebels you might find that you have um, also in this life um, a little bit of a rough relationship with the police or with um, the government. So these ancestral powers they also form a little bit of patterns of behavior and these patterns of behavior they will tend to yeah, happen in the same way unless enough energy is spent to transform them but they are not nearly as flexible as our own spirit is. So you can't undo the pattern of having problems with the police which you have been maybe created over five, six generations of being outlaws, bandits and pirates in just one lifetime very easily. These are very deep-rooted energies which are part of your own life force, your own personality structure as you inherit it. 
and you can bend it a little, but usually you cannot create a total transformation very easily. It is much more easy to awaken the slumbering power, uh, but these negative patterns, they are very, very stuck, so they require a lot of attention, a lot of energy to, uh, to start to change, to start to break free from. So it often requires also a very radical break that you really make a very strong decision in my life I'm not going to be like my father my grandfather or my mother and my grandmother like this pattern they have I can feel it is pulling on me it is trying to hold me but I'm going to fight it and if you have such strength in yourself you can clean out your bloodline and purify it so that your children and their your grandchildren won't have to have the same experiences as you have so the, let's say, the solidity of the energy of the bloodline is both a benefit because powers can slumber for a very long time without being totally erased, uh, but it also makes it very hard work to uh, really try to change the patterns which are not beneficial to you. Um, often these patterns are also so strong that they actually trump your own willpower, like you might not want to have any problems with the government or to be a rebel, but people will recognize it in you, they will see it in you, they will be attracted to you, they will uh, involve you in these things almost naturally because this pattern of behavior, this also connection to these energy flows within society will just hook onto your energy body and pull you in those directions. So a lot of things are not just a personal problem but they can actually be a generational problem, um, both in a positive and in a negative way. Another special case of um, a bloodline inheritance is also the caste. I'm talking here about the, um, the caste system as it is known by the, um, the Indian people, the Vedic tradition of having the pariah, the sudra, or worker. The pariah is basically the person without skill, without value. Um, sudra is basically the, uh, the skilled worker. Uh, Vaisha, the person who is not skilled only with the hands, but also on a, on a social level, on a more mental level, on a higher level. The ksatriya, the person who has could say more authority, more leadership, they know right from wrong, they can be an example to other people in society. And the Brahmana, the one who is actually able to um, lead society forward to yeah, be more visionary, you could say. But also these sensitivities to these different levels of energy are also things which can be inherited. From your, uh, from your bloodline and also they can be built upon so you can be born in a certain caste and by working on yourself you can increase your caste and also by behaving in a very poor and bad way like for instance you may be born as etc but if you behave in a very immoral way then you will lose those capabilities and also your, your children will not have these capabilities anymore your offspring so this way it is very much um, about building a foundation because your children and your grandchildren and so forth will inherit what you have built and what your ancestors have built for you. So a very hard work to change the bloodline patterns but also a very worthwhile work to change these blood bloodline patterns because ultimately they will increase yeah you could say civilization culture human ability on this planet as to how it affects us on a, on a social level or family level um, many people in born in the same family they may be of a different caste but they tend to be at least not too far apart because their parents tend to be if they are indeed from the same parents. They tend to be relatively close together in, uh, in energy level. 
but as to what powers they will inherit, there can be a, a difference depending on the choice of the spirit, which will choose a different time of birth. And the time of birth, because of the uh, different elemental energies and different planetary energies, will focus on a certain part of this inheritance. So one person might be born with a very strong uh, Venus and Mercury energies and they will really work with all the communication talents which exist within that bloodline. Well, other persons might choose to be born with a very strong Pluto and Mars aspect and, they, and if that's combined with fire they will be very interested in disciplining themselves in going beyond their boundaries and uh, really exploring the, the, the unknown parts of their own body, their psyche and of the world around them and of the cosmos. So depending on the choice of the spirit which is then reflected in the planetary and um, elemental constellation at the, when they build up their energy body people can use different parts of the bloodline but the other parts of the bloodline which are unused they still are carried with them and also transferred to their offspring. This is also one of the arguments which is often made by spiritual people against having children when you're too young because you won't have had a chance yet to clear up your bloodline before you pass it on. So the same traumas which were unresolved within you, you give to your children and they give to their grandchildren. If you have very young, very immature uh, parents, one after the other. So I think this tendency to have children after the personality structure has been more or less solidified or stabilized. And the biggest yeah, blockages and... Uh, sabotage has been gotten out of the way I think this is a positive thing so for women this is generally between depending on how quickly they work on themselves after 23 to 27 depending on how much there is to resolve or how much there is to do so I think an ideal yeah age for a mother would be after 23 to 27 and of course don't wait too long because then also your own life force will start depleting and you will, won't be able to give as much of an imprint to your children either. So the, the structure of the thing you inherit might be very good and nice and pure, but there will be less power in it. So having children in a young age, you in a way are trading uh, power for skill, roughly speaking. It also depends, of course, on how well you maintain your own energy body and what condition you're in. So by doing things which are healthy for your energy body, like um, yoga, martial arts, um, or getting treatments like acupuncture, shiatsu, to keep your life force in a good condition, it also helps to give a stronger uh, bloodline inheritance to your children. Uh, men, unfortunately, tend to mature much more slowly than, uh, than women do. So I think that for a man, in general, it would be better to start being a father when they're around 40. Um, some manage to get it, yeah, get the personality sorted out when they're 36, 37. Um, but usually around that age, uh, by 38 to 40, most men have become pure, purified enough, stable enough, while still having enough life force to create a healthy pattern for their uh, for the children so this would be an optimal uh, system so you could say that yeah I know many people believe that um, yeah people should be of a, of a similar age when having uh, when having their offspring but uh, personally just looking at the energetic dynamics of it I think it is good that the man is about yeah 12 years older uh, than the woman is. But of course it depends very much on the level of spiritual development. So some men develop very quickly, some men, women may develop very slowly and then 
can get cases where it is the opposite, that actually a young man would be a very good match for a much older woman because they are actually having a both an optimum for creating offspring at that point in time. So, um, I hope that uh, this has been uh, helpful in explaining a little bit how uh, your energetic inheritance can impact you in your daily lives and in your social interactions. Thank you for listening and I hope you will think of uh, perhaps donating to us or becoming a member so we can produce more videos like this.